For the first time, scientists are analysing Fjordland's iconic black corals in deep waters to see how changes such as marine heat waves are impacting them. The corals help remove carbon from the ocean and create important habitats for fish and other organisms that feed our fisheries. Alexa Cook has this exclusive report. Fjordland's majestic mountains plunge straight into the ocean and are carpeted in lush beach forest. But dive below the surface... Good to go, guys. ..and you'll find another kind of tree called black coral, which actually looks white but has a black skeleton. The ancient organism has been growing here since the 1600s. We've seen uh, just this morning one that was, you know, nearly four metres across. It's probably, you know, will be hundreds of years old. Um, with all kind of cool things growing over it, their own little um, communities in their own right. About 10 million black corals cling to Fiordland's reefs, and some have starfish clinging to them. Using an underwater drone, Victoria University's marine biologists are the first to ever survey the abundance of the corals in deep waters of between 50 and 100 metres and collect samples from there too. You can see there are some other black corals in the background. They have a permit to take the samples as part of a project investigating if Fiordland's black corals are genetically linked to each other. The findings will determine if the risks they face for marine heat waves and changes in rainfall could completely wipe the iconic species out. If there are populations that are isolated um, and they get damaged or destroyed, then there's a possibility that they might take a really long time to come back or might not come back at all if there are no um, sources of, of new babies into that population. Open. Once the drone clips a piece of coral, it brings it up to the surface where we carefully collect it in a Ziploc bag. This is one of the many samples of black corals that are being taken out of Fjordland on this trip. They'll be taken on board where they're then going to go through a DNA sequencing process when they get back to the lab in Wellington. But first we hand it over to be sliced into small fragments and placed into little test tubes of preservative solution to protect the DNA structure for future analysis. If there is like genetic connectivity, we can tell if they are more closely related or not. The scientists also suit up to glide down and snip segments at about 15 to 20 metres deep. It's part of their mission to learn more about the black coral's growth and mortality rates and see what's changed since earlier shallow surveys in the 80s and 90s. Because Fiordland gets so much rain, there's a really deep layer here of freshwater that sits above the seawater and it washes down through the forests, which means there's a high concentration of tannins that creates a much darker environment for the black corals. So instead of living in thousands of metres of water, you can find them as shallow as just five metres. It kind of tricks them to thinking they're in, they're in deeper water. The research project is partly funded by the Department of Conservation. It's really useful for us to be able to know a little bit more so that we can help to understand it and help to try and, you know, try and safeguard it for the future. Doc provides the boat, which the scientists live on for their week-long trip, using the vessel as a research base. <laughs> the work is important for Doc's understanding of what's happening in the water. With climate change and with the sort of warming ocean, there's starting to be effects for certain species, and it'll be really nice for us to know if that's going to travel through to sort of black corals or other coral species. Because losing these special black corals would be a major loss for Fiordland's biodiversity and a major failure by humans to look after our oceans. Alexa Cook, News Hub.